Okay, those are pictures of Arun Jaitley, ladies and gentlemen, on the big screen, and we'll also run those pictures full frame right now. As I take you over those pictures, I'll tell you a little bit about the rituals and details of a budget presentation. That's Arun Jaitley. The path to the presentation of the budget is absolutely no joke, let me tell you. Security around the budget was at its peak since 6 p.m. yesterday till the finance minister delivers his speech. The finance minister's budget speech is considered the most top secret document because it contains the brief summary of all budget proposals. Last minute doc changes till 11 p.m. the day before. That briefcase has all those details out there. I wonder, I, I wonder whether we will see an iPad or a tablet maybe in the future out there. But there's something, you know, so marvelous <coughs> about, this, about this briefcase. I wonder if it's the same briefcase. It look, looks like a new one. Uh, you, you know, but it's I, so nostalgic. It, it, it's nostalgic. Yeah, no? yeah. It's uh, nostalgic. You, you can have I can iPad, tell you, there's, there's, there's no austerity yeah. about the briefcase. Yes. It looks like a fancy, fancy <laughs> briefcase. Too. I hope Ra Rahul Gandhi doesn't comment on this. <laughs> well, I hope it's not a Burberry briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yesterday there was a customary halwa ceremony to mark the quarantine period which ends. And it's quite interesting. Our 110 finance ministry officials and staff, there was, uh, there was a halwa ceremony which happened earlier on the 24th. 110 finance ministry officials and staff, printing and other personnel, entered into a quarantine, quarantine phase in the finance ministry on basement. the 24th basement. of January. In the basement. So they go into the basement and they live there. And they don't know what's happening in the world. They, they don't know what's happening in the somebody world. Somebody is dead or alive, they don't know. Till they reach surface uh, to, uh, last evening. Oh, okay. And so they had a halwa ceremony on 21st and, and, and they also come out alive. Well, I don't know because <laughs> I was not in the basement. No, they also come out alive. We know that they are alive after they come out. <laughs> yeah. Well, amazing. <laughs> amazing. And there is a well-oiled PR machinery, INB Ministries, PR, PIB, entered the finance ministry last evening, viewers, along with the team from the National Informatics Center to prepare press releases and infographics that go with the post-budget presentation. So that's a part which Smriti Rani is looking at. And the budget is of such great significance and secrecy that the Intelligence Bureau keeps a tab on who's coming and going, for what purpose, till the finance, inside the finance ministry during this period. Staffers have no access to phones. You're completely quarantined. Even the health of the quarantine staff, there are doctors to take care of it, and no visitors are allowed. It sounds like uh, <laughs> being in the tower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, under Henry VIII. <laughs> Only if you have a head on your shoulders still. Uh, Ramesh Samani, good morning. Most respected voice from the markets. Great pleasure to have you on. Every budget you have given me the privilege of talking to you. Markets should be opening mm -hmm. soon. So Ramesh Damani, Sanjay Baru. Sanjay Baru, another from Fiki joining us there. And Sanjay Baru, besides his role in Fiki, uh, he is, by the way, Secretary General of Fiki. He is former media advisor to Dr. Manmohan Singh. So I have disagreed with him on more issues in the past than I have with even you, M.R. Venkatesh. But, uh, but, but uh, you know, great pleasure to have you, Sanjay. First to you, Ramesh. Expectations before the budget. Ramesh. Market expectations, broad expectations from Jaitley. Uh, good morning, Adam. Sure. Uh, good morning, Adam. Nice to be on uh, your television with you. I think when Mr. the finance, the Honorable Finance Minister presents the budget to the Bell of the Parliament, he's going to use, and to use an American phrase, Bad audio the State of the Union is good, and with this bad, budget, bad I Bad audio link. I don't know if I'm getting the audio correctly. There's a haste around that audio. Can I just, Ramesh, I'm so sorry. I'm having a technical problem out there. I'm going to come back to you in exactly one minute because I'm getting a little audio hiss over what you're saying, so don't mind. 60 seconds. I know you're going to get busy soon. We'll fix that in 60 seconds. I'd like to, in the meantime, go across to Sanjay Baru. Sanjay, Fiki's expectations, your expectations, policy expectations this time. Sanjay. Well, Fiki's expectations are quite clear. We would like to see the, uh, a, a budget that uh, revives investment. Uh, private investment cycle has been down for the last four or five years. Uh, there has been a certain loss of confidence in the entire policy making system over the last few years. I think business is looking for a boost in confidence. Indian business uh, is looking for a boost in confidence. Um, so whatever the finance minister does, as long as it restores medium to long term confidence, not just in the growth process, but in the government's capacity to address some of the challenges that we are facing, whether it's, it's on the inflation side, whether it's about uh, getting investment going, ease of doing business, uh, you know, promoting exports, exchange rate management. You know, I think 
we believe that while the government is doing its best, it can do much more uh, to restore confidence in the future of the Indian economy. So this budget is not just about today, it has to be about tomorrow and the future. Because the last three, four years, we have seen a slowdown. We have seen uh, a loss of confidence, which because of which private investment is not picking up. And I think that is what uh, the speech has to be about. He can't do much on indirect taxes. We have GST. On direct taxes, there may be a little bit of populist, uh, kind of anti-rich, pro-middle class stuff, which one expects uh, uh, before the elections. But I think their overall message of the budget has to be one of restoring <laughs> confidence. Sir, a, a comment on the word slowdown. A, a, comment, a, comment, a comment on the word slowdown is coming in. But before that, I want to go to, to Ramesh Damani. Uh, Ramesh, uh, Ramesh, to call you a market expert is an understatement. So just tell us as one of the longest term players and observers of the Indian markets, which many people believe are overheated, uh, on that your expectations and what uh, Arun Jaitley's biggest challenge will be this morning. Uh, Arnab, thank you. I think uh, uh, Mr. Jaitley, to use an American phrase, when he rises to present the budget, he will say that the State of the Union is good, but with this budget process, I intend to make it great. And I think the two things that the uh, market will be looking at very actively is, of course, what he does with long-term capital gains tax. My personal view is that he's not going to change that. In fact, it will leave unchanged, which will be a big boost for the market. And, of course, the fiscal deficit, which I think will come around his glide path of 3.2. So I think for both the reasons, the market will cheer this budget uh, when he comm uh, can commence the, well, the budget to the well of the House. Yeah, you've been talking, you know, I just want, a, want, want one reiteration from you because on long-term capital gains tax, actually, we haven't spoken about it in the panel this morning. Many young investors are so wary of entering the capital market, equity market, because of that, it will impact liquidity. In your view, this is a political budget, right? And people were nervous after Davos. When the Prime Minister said to people that, you know, I know I'm going to look, see if you're going to like me after the budget, and some people said this time he's going to bring in inheritance tax, he'll bring in long-term capital gains tax. You know, Mr. Mr. Jaitley evokes those kind of sentiments. People are so scared of what he might do, especially the business community, which doesn't trust him completely yet on these issues. So do you think, do you think uh, uh, long-term capital gains tax is absolutely, absolutely out? And if it doesn't happen, is the, are the markets going to go through a boost this morning? Uh, uh, Arnab, it's my judgment that he won't do it, and I'll tell you the reasons why he won't do it. The finance minister himself has appointed a direct taxation committee under Arvind Modi to look under direct changes reform. So the government intends to change it. They'll rather wait till the report yeah. of that committee is out, and they will signal to the market so the market will be less volatile. Yeah. And secondly, the government is already collecting 8 to 10,000 through STT, which is a clean, efficient way to collect it through two stock exchanges yeah. rather than one crore investors. So I think the better part of wisdom would suggest, because of the government's disinvestment program, because of its eye on the market, that they would postpone, if anything, long-term capital gains. I would bet that it probably would not come in this budget. Okay, uh, since we have uh, Ramesh with us for a few more minutes, Samir and the others, any other issues you want to pick up with a view on the market? Samir. So I think... Uh, you got to look at it is that the Indian market, when you call it overheated, it's also in line with the wor world markets. All world markets have gone up. And what does it do to, let's look at now, just say, what does yeah. it do to the Indian economy? Yeah. Your, disinvest your disinvestment target now, I mean, yeah. you're achieving 90,000 crores. Yeah. Next year, you could do 150,000. Yeah. That, the market helps. Yeah. If the sentiment is good, yeah. you can disinvest. Now, that yeah. 100, 150,000 crores is a big lot which you can do for, as you're talking about agriculture, other things. Yeah. So, you, you know, so I don't, uh, you know, so there is good and there is bad. So, you know, if, if it, I think uh, probably it could be, prudence could be that you just let it be. Yeah. But you, you know, never you know. know. I, I, I saw that, I saw that in the panel, a lot of raised eyebrows and agreement on the left-hand side of the panel when uh, Sanjay Baru said, slow down. Uh, I, 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 that's going to be controversial, let me tell you. He said, he's, oh, this government, you've only seen slow down under the Narendra Modi government. He's Secretary General of FICI. To be saying that is significant. I welcome Rumjum Chatterjee to the panel. Rumjum Chatterjee in 2016 became the first woman chairperson of the CI Northern Regional Council. She's co-founder of Feedback Infra and leading practitioner in the management of human capital. Rumjum, thanks very much. Welcome. Uh, you've been very optimistic about the India story, even when it comes to employment. 
what are you expecting Jetli to do today in terms of job creation? That's your area. Oh, that's Given the right. fact that it will not just be the single biggest pick-me-up for the economy line, but the biggest boost for the Aam Aadmi. What Absolutely. do you expect him to do? Absolutely. I think related to that, the first point that we have to take into consideration is yeah. that we have to bring a revival in the investment climate. Yeah. Right? That will create the jobs, yeah. and that's what we're looking forward to. Yeah. And there are several uh, recommendations that we have made um, about making industry look globally competitive yeah. through a lower corporate yeah. tax, perhaps a big, big push on spending on infrastructure. Yeah. That's going to be a huge uh, thing. Oh, yes. The bank recapitalization, I think, will also help investment. You think so? And therefore, yes, that's uh, certainly a thing. And also we've made a recommendation on creating, uh, you know, a climate of innovation yeah. so that that can spur um, whether entrepreneurship or yeah. uh, job creation. Yeah. The second thing that we're looking forward to is a big push on agricultural growth, yeah. where it's not only about job creation, but linking the farmers to totally. markets. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and we, we have, we've talked about some cost compensation schemes which would help in that direction. Well, I'm just going to come back to you sure, Rindu, in a bit. Sure. You have a bit of breaking news? No, no. no okay. Just can, 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 I just, can I just come back on the analysis just a bit because Mr. Damani has to go and I want to ask Mr. Damani before he goes and I want to welcome uh, my friend Uday Ved who's on the program, who's been with KPMG in the, I, in the past. <coughs> very, very senior tax expert and he's going to be giving us his perspective on what you can expect in terms of taxes. Uday, good morning. Thanks for joining us in our studios in Mumbai. But before I let uh, Ramesh go, Ramesh, People are watching on every word out here. Uh, in 2017, you called it a disciplined budget that the markets had cheered. You remember that. Most recently, you've been quoted as saying that the markets will continue to wade through volatility for some time. What do you mean by that? And do you expect Mr. Jaitley to maintain stability in the short and medium term in a pre-election budget? Uh, yes, I expect him to do maintain. I think it's my judgment that the market will end the post-budget session higher. Uh, I'm looking at the way a lot of people say the market has risen too fast. But if you look at when Mr. Jaitley presented the budget in 2015, the sensex was around 30,000. Today it's around 36,000. So it's been a 20% move in three years. You know, if you look at from 15 to 18, a 6% annual. Oh yes. So that's not very right. What yeah. has happened is the mid caps and small caps have risen very sharply. So people are having vertigo because of that. I think the Indian economy is showing green shoots of recovery. I don't think they're doing anything to upset the apple cart. And I expect this bull market which began in 2013 will continue well into 2019 when the new election will then change the paradigm. Then we'll judge market. who's coming back to power and center and what are the policies likely to be. Yeah. So I think for right now we are okay. Okay, market just opened. One second. Uh, Ramesh. I'm going to keep you one and a half minutes more because market just opened. Let's see how the markets are okay. opening. And based upon that quick comment from you, you're going to be a busy man after that, right? You say markets are going to do well, they're going to end up higher. Markets are opening green. Your comments on that. Markets are opening significantly green, significantly green this morning. Right? So let's get the full number on how the markets are opening. Uh, your comment on that. Arnab, markets will be uh, in, in a budget session very volatile. Uh, it will go up and down, as you know. And when the finance minister presents his uh, direct tax proposals on income tax, personal income tax, there will be uh, a market will go into green and into red. But I think when all is said and done, the dust is cleared. If there is no action on LTCG, for example, if he uh, you know does no changes on that, I'm pretty confident that the market will end up higher. If he does something on LTCG, then of course you could have a very volatile and perhaps even a down day. But I'm not expecting any movement on that. Okay, Ramesh, thanks very much for that. And look forward to seeing you again. Have a good budget day, Ramesh. Thank you very much. That's Ramesh Damani. Wonderful guy, member of the Thank BSC you, there. Thank you, I'd like to go across next to Krishna Kumar. <laughs> to Krishna Kumar, who's joining us from CII with Bidisha Ganguly, who's the chief economist there. Krishna and Okay. Okay, Bidisha. Bidisha Ganguly, we are going directly to you, Bidisha. Yes. Don't worry, don't worry, I can see you there. I can see you there. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, hi, Bidisha. Uh, I can't see you. <laughs> hi. Hi. 
No, that's all right. It's always one-way uh, communication with me anyway. Uh, you know, if you know what I mean. So. Uh, right. <laughs> so, very strong expectation of a corporate tax cut, mainly because the finance minister had promised that a couple of years ago in his budget speech, and he also re did reduce the uh, corporate tax for uh, 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 for smaller companies, and we expect him to take it forward for larger companies as well. Uh, in this budget. So that's the one big expectation uh, from the corporate sector. Uh, Other than that, of course, we, uh, what we want is a strong yes. economy uh, for which uh, the rural sector is extremely important. Uh, so we do hope that he does things to shore up the agricultural sector and to, which will create a lot of demand for consumption. And that is always good for uh, the economy and uh, companies. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, and, uh, Vidisha, third, just I stay on on that. that. A couple uh, of questions uh, coming your way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ye okay. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, go on, go on. Go on, go on. Go on, Vidisha. Yeah, uh, I should go on? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The third point I would like to say is that you know, the, yeah. uh, there is a concern about fiscal uh, consolidation. And uh, what we have said from CII is that the government should continue on the path of fiscal consolidation because otherwise interest rates would tend to go up and that again would hurt the, uh, the economy. So uh, good, uh, go for higher spending on infrastructure and agriculture, but uh, at the same time raise resources through disinvestment, through uh, things like asset recycling. So uh, th there are ways to raise resources without raising taxes necessarily. Okay, so uh, Abhishek was sitting here, executive editor, and his comment was that you want you want the moon uh, when you are saying something like that. Why do you say so? Why do you say well, Vidisha is wanting the moon when she says that? Well, you want the fiscal deficit to be uh, in, in the 3.2 range. Yeah, yeah, and then you want the uh, corporate tax also down. So right. and, and the finance and you want agricultural spending to go up. Yeah, exactly. So you want the spending to go up. You want taxes to come down. So how would the finance minister only disinvestment? Manage? That's what they are pitching for essentially. Only disinvestment. Yeah, yes. so, so Prakash, so watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, let me introduce you to, let me introduce you to Vidisha, Pradisha, Vidisha Prakash yeah. Reddy of the Communist Party of India feels that yeah. you are essentially laying a trap when you say this okay. and you are okay. only pitching for disinvestment okay. <laughs> which is what, what FIKI members may, uh, what CIA members may want. Right. Uh, speak and to us. Right. And corporate tax cut. Yeah, what, what is your problem with you're that? You are only okay. interested in corporate I'll tax uh, cut, yeah. nothing. <coughs> Even if farmers die, there are problems. No employment, you are interested in uh, no, tax I have cut. She didn't mention, I have mm. mentioned Even if farmers die, she doesn't care. Very much care. on our agenda. No, 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 their basic interest is that. She's replying, no, please. She's replying. Let her reply. I'm saying that uh, several clarifications. One is that I've mentioned agriculture as one of the most important priorities for this budget, and farmers should do well. Uh, second, my clarification is that uh, it, it's not just disinvestment, there is also a lot of money that uh, the government can raise from the private sector without raising taxes. So uh, taxes, in, in my mind, actually there is a reduction in the corporate tax rate. The effective rate is already far below the uh, rate that is uh, on the paper. The effective tax rate is around 25%. And there is no reason why it should not come down to that level. Yeah. Uh, 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 that is that's one point. And that's the second that's point that's is that I'm saying do raise to money. And the crore crore no, no, Nishant, no, that my, is losing. My simple question to Vidisha is, Ni Nishant Varma, political analyst, is, is, is asking a question. Go on, Nishant. Vidisha, my simple question to you is, you mentioned that you were talking about yes. some small company benefits from the government. Your expectation is so. Now, the question remains that apart from tax cut, what has the recommendation from CII to the finance minister of this country has been pre-budget asking for benefits for such kind of MSME segment in India which is down in the slump? What have you done no as a dozier? Have you recommended pre-budget anything to them? Zero. Or are you only wanting a corporate, corporate tax, tax cut? cut. Yeah. So I need an answer. No, so corp the MSMEs also come under corporates, right? And if the economy does well, MSMEs do well. And we are asking for yes, MSMEs... Uh, My question was, uh, apart from corporate tax cut, have you suggested any other thing for the betterment of MSME 
in the country which is absolutely dead. Yes, if you actually yes. have the figures, it is absolutely dead. Spending on infrastructure. What are the recommendations you made to the finance spending minister? Spending on infrastructure, health, MSMEs, logistics, etc., are, uh, are very weak. Okay, in our for country. re rolling milk and, and steel, MSMEs what have you said? Because when you say infrastructure, you mix up. Allow me, Bidisha. When you say infrastructure, it's a huge the umbrella subject. Let me ask a simple question. Yes. For re-rolling mills in steel. Yes. The re-rolling yes. mills of steel, what has your suggestions been? So why should we, re Let's we ask a do simple not one point question. for specific what sectors? What has CII suggested? Nothing. That's the, the, the exact the issue. The 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 okay, listen. Listen. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Okay, one minute, one minute gentlemen, this calm down. Question. Calm down. This She's not presenting the budget for God's sake. She's the chief economist of the CII. He is lobbying you, for <laughs> corporate tax. <laughs> That's you all. No, no. Right, sir. Everybody yes, is lobbying. lobbying. No, 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 no. But there's no, 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 no. Yes, she's lobbying. No, no. Yes, she's lobbying for corporate tax. No, she should not. No, no. But the CII has opened. No, no. One second. But one sec, just one minute. This is an open and stated position. She's not doing something surreptitiously. No, no. The corporate sector has wanted, even the government is committed to bringing down corporate taxes. So yeah, what are you complaining about? Here is what happened. 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 No, no, one second. Okay. So what happened? There has been a commitment from the finance minister. Odeber. Odeber. Odeber on tax. Time for some questions to you. By the way, Odeber is not just a senior tax expert. He's studying the Indian economy for decades now. Question is, I'll start with a broad question over there to you. Bidisha, stay on because, you know, these a few of my panelists there want to enter into, you know, a complete gladiatorial contest with you on, on some of the issues that you raised. I'm sure you'll be a sport. Uh, oh, there, how can Mr. Jaitley balance the urge <coughs> to raise the individual tax and lower the corporate tax while maintaining prudence as well? So it's going to be a, a very tight rope uh, bringing the populism versus the uh, uh, giving the fiscal uh, deficit intact. In uh, I would believe even at the cost of little sleepage on the fiscal deficit, it is important uh, uh, that he gives uh, benefits to the common men more. Uh, look at it. Common men is the one who supported demonetize and the biggest initiative at that point of time. Uh, and also GST. One, one looks at some of the figures. Uh, people with less than 20 lakhs also have gone and registered. So common man is the one who has really supported this. So I would believe uh, from an individual perspective, uh, certainly, uh, you know, the exemption limit of 2.5 lakh needs to be raised to 3 lakhs. Now, there is an issue because the moment you raise a uh, limit uh, from 2.5 to 3 lakhs, some of the people may go out of the tax net. Uh, so expansion of tax net, one would have to look at it and balance it. Uh, certainly, a slab rate change that he made last year was very interesting from 2.5 to 5 lakhs. He reduced the tax from 10% to 5%. And one way to address this would be to extend this up to say 10 mm. lakhs. And that will really address some of the small entrepreneurs, mm. salaried class people but to then, have 5% tax. But, no, no, but, but then, but then, but then, Uday, 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 I want to bring a second perspective on this and get MR and Samir on this. You see, we have seen a consistent reduction in the fiscal deficit target year after year from 3.9, 3.5, 3 3.2. I don't know if you can have a similar reduction in a pre-election year. I think it's impossible to do that. Also because, Samir, there is uncertainty over indirect tax collections because of the GST rollout. We don't have certainty on that yet. When you don't have certainty on that, how can you with certainty reduce taxes on another front? Sami. Two things. I think uh, there is now visibility coming up that with GST, indirect taxes are going up. So at the end of the day, you're forecasting. Something is better than nothing. Yeah. Correct. Definitely, it's, yeah, you can see that. And oh, you know, sure. no, 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 you're also gambling on growth. And you're also gambling on growth. No, no, can I, can I, can I get it? No, no, you're also gambling on growth. You're not at 6.5%, you're at 7.5%, which means your indirect tax collection goes up significantly. That's what I was saying. So, That's the point. so back to Samit. So you can look at the same yes, two Back things. to Samit. Coming, so coming, coming to Prakash. Coming to Prakash. Last Samit. month collections higher than earlier months. Yeah. You're looking at growth being 7.5%. 
You yeah, could exactly. be looking at the last quarter of this year finishing with the 8% growth. Principally, yes. So you are looking at, so I don't see this, and you're seeing more and more citizens, more and more people registering. Yeah. And so I, I, I would see up. there is I corporate buoyancy, there is buoyancy, both will be on GST and even income tax. So you, it's not that it's going to be, it's going down. Uh, Arna, uh, the uncertainty could be amount of growth. You're yeah. right. They could be saying, what is it? But you know, it's a forecast. But, yeah, but, 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 but one more thing. If this is going to be an election year, one percentage point comes from just elections alone. So you have to understand you are not going to talk about 8% <laughs> growth, you are talk talking plus 1% growth if there is going to be election during the end of this year. So you have to factor all these things <laughs> and you gamble on growth. You have to have that gambler's okay. instinct. You cannot be saying that okay. you, are, you are going to be an accountant and just trying to well, balance the well, 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 I would say, I would just say. Political risk as he said. Political risk. Prakash, Prakash. No, no, no. Prakash, Prakash. You are putting it for this. Coming down, corporate taxes are coming out. What about GST? GST is slabs, you know, 28%. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to Singapore, 7%. Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I tell you one thing? Can I, can I tell you one thing? You compare this, New Zealand 10% of GST. I, I, I want to tell you one thing. I want to tell you one thing. As far as I am concerned, as far as Republic is concerned, we have no indirect taxes. Right. We have no indirect yeah, revenue collection happening anywhere. Say, we only have, everybody, everybody we, we only have, we yeah, only have, we have our only revenue yeah, collection is on advertising. So I'll have to take an advertising break, <laughs> if you don't mind. My direct, indirect and complete revenue collection See, I, happening I, here. Please, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you smile. Yeah, Every time I mention Gately, uh, I think you're going to just uh, come uh, back. I'm just ten seconds <laughs> prior, prior to the break. I mean, GST when we talk, I don't sir. think we can ten be seconds. compared to New Zealand and okay. any other country. Take the break. Yeah, yeah. So we, 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 we take the break. Ladies and gentlemen, a short that's commercial that's break that's necessary for the health of Republic. Take a short break. Okay, see you on the other side. See you on the other side.